In early January 2024, a study on Gigantopithecus published in the journal Nature received a great deal of media attention. Articles were published in the New York Times, CNN, Axios, Le Monde, UK Daily Mail, AP, Discover, and National Geographic. Smithsonian, researchers say prehistoric climate change may have led to the species' downfall. According to a paper just published in Nature, the huge apes couldn't adjust their diets to keep pace with the shifting environment. Kara Westaway of Macquarie University in Sydney, quote, Homo erectus was definitely in the northern part of China at the same time that Giganto was, end quote. From the study, there is no evidence to suggest that archaic hominids played a role in this earlier megafaunal extinction event in southern China. One of the co-authors of the study, Russell Xia Chong, led an expedition in the late 1980s to North Vietnam to hunt for Gigantopithecus. Described as an exotic adventure by three young Americans in post-war Vietnam, anthropological lore mixed with intrigue, like something straight out of Indiana Jones. Sia Chon is a jovial, mild-mannered Midwestern college professor. He teaches anthropology at the University of Iowa. But on his off time, he's a swashbuckling worldwide adventurer. Instead of hunting for a treasure, Sia Chon treks the globe looking for extinct hominids and mysterious primate species. Expedition to post-war Vietnam. The war officially ended in 1973. Since then, a handful of veterans groups have been permitted to enter Vietnam to search for remains of fallen brothers who died in battle. But Sia Chon's team were among the very first American scientific research expeditions. Preparations for the expedition. The expedition was covered by both a National Geographic and a Vietnamese film crew. The team had to overcome massive bureaucratic hurdles from the Hanoi government. They also had to deal with logistical nightmares in acquiring food and supplies. They ran into multiple bouts of unanticipated bad weather. Dragon Bones. Sia Chon was relying on notes and research papers from French, German, and Dutch anthropologists who had explored the region in the 1940s and 50s. He especially relied on the writings of Dutch paleoanthropologist Gustav von Koniswald, an expert on Homo erectus and Gigantopithecus. Von K, as his friends called him, had dealt with crafty Chinese herbalists in Hong Kong. They would use bones of rare animals, including primates, for herbal medicines and aphrodisiacs. Sia Chon writes that, like von Koniswald, they were, quote, racing against old world pharmacists who routinely ground up invaluable fossils, end quote, for medicinal use. A big score. Halong Bay is in the Gulf of Tonkin, where the historical incident occurred launching the Vietnam War. Vietnamtravel.com 
no visit to North Vietnam is complete without a trip to Ha Long Bay, one of the seven world wonders of nature with over 2,000 limestone islands and cliffs. Ha Long Bay was the launching off point for the team's trip inland to Long Trong. They set out to hunt for fossils in caves near the Chinese border where both Homo erectus and Gigantopithecus fossils had been found in the 1950s and 60s. According to their Vietnamese hosts, one cave in particular, Long Trong, seemed especially promising. As Sia Shon described in his book, the team braved countless dangers including giant snakes, spiders, and other wild animals. Travelsnippet.com, Vietnam actually has some of the highest rates of snake bites in the world. They set up camp at the edge of the limestone cliffs. Sia Chon relays how the Vietnamese would blare Bee Gees music in continuous rotation. He also relayed that the disco music was at least bearable, unlike the constant diet of noodles and grayish days old duck eggs. For days, the Americans toiled in two chambers, their host occasionally lending a hand. Several bone fragments of the extinct pygmy giant pandas and orangutans were found. Vietnamese team members were not at all disappointed. Their aim was to find antiquities as well as precious ancient animal bones. The Americans were not happy with the results. On a whim, they decided to try a fifth chamber that had been untouched. Within hours of searching the fifth chamber, the Americans discovered two Homo erectus teeth. Sia Chon writes, our discovery of Homo erectus in Long Trong Cave is particularly important. It fills the gap between Zhou Kaldian in China and Java, some 2,500 miles to the south. Quote, at Long Trong, we discovered the only firmly dated Homo erectus fossils in Southeast Asia, end quote, Professor Sia Chon. The Vietnamese authorities of culture and antiquities were grateful to the Americans for the discovery of the Homo erectus teeth and panda bones. Back in Hanoi, the Vietnamese even threw them a banquet to celebrate. Sia Chon and his team had helped to open Vietnam for future scientific research and conservation efforts. As for finding evidence for Gigantopithecus, the team left Vietnam empty-handed. Long Gu Po, Dragon Bone Hill. The Chinese had learned of his success. Several years later, Sia Chon returned to Asia on another trek. Chinese authorities were puzzled by a mandible and teeth found at Dragon Bone Slope in the Yangtze River Valley, dubbed Wushan Man. Chinese archaeologists originally believed the fossils to be from an early Homo erectus. Then their hypothesis was shifted to Gigantopithecus. From a 1996 study from Xia Chon, in Asia, during the Pleistocene and recent times, we have one very large ape, Gigantopithecus, one large ape, the orangutans, at least one smaller ape, a mystery ape, and the gibbons. Sia Chon, in light of new evidence from across Southeast Asia and after a decade of my own field research in Java, I am now convinced that the Long Gupo fossil and others do not represent a pre-erectus human, but rather one or more mystery apes. More to come on Wushan Man of Longu Po.
Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.